Welcome to part nine of the pre-tribulation rapture exposed. In this video, we'll be addressing the assumption that the tribulation of the last days is the wrath of God. Based upon this assumption, the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine goes on to reason that the church must be caught up in a rapture before the tribulation because the Bible says that Christians aren't appointed to suffer the wrath of God. So if the tribulation and God's wrath are one and the same, then the church can't be on the earth during the tribulation. But the truth is that the coming tribulation is not the same as God's wrath. The Bible makes it very clear that tribulation is something that the children of God suffer and the wrath of God is something that the children of the devil suffer. And Jesus himself said, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And we see in the book of Acts that right from the start, tribulation was the experience of the early church as Christians were heavily persecuted and believers like Stephen were martyred for their faith in Christ. And we know also that Saul of Tarsus, prior to becoming a believer himself and being transformed by Christ to become the apostle we know today as Paul, was himself engaged in persecuting the early church and rounding up believers like Stephen to be executed. And history records that all of the Lord's apostles except for John were martyred for their faith as well. And during the many centuries of the Roman Catholic Inquisition, millions of true Christians were slaughtered for refusing to bow down to the false gospel of Rome. And to this day, Christians are still persecuted, imprisoned, and killed for their faith, especially in the Islamic countries. So anyone who studies the history of the church will soon discover that it is a history of tribulation, of persecution and martyrdom. It was that way from the start, and it will remain that way to the finish. So when Jesus speaks of the coming great tribulation in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, all he's saying is that the same type of tribulation, persecution, suffering, and martyrdom that has always been the experience of the church will continue and will greatly intensify to reach a peak in the years before his second coming. He has forewarned us about all the things that will have to be endured by his people during the tribulation, and he has told us that only when we see these events happening should we then look up for our redemption draws near. Please take heed to his words and his warnings, for he never said that we should be looking for his coming at any moment, as today's false teachers claim. He described all the events of the tribulation, including the rise of the Antichrist, and then he said, when you see these things, you are to look up in anticipation of his return. For it's only when you see these events of the tribulation happening that his return is imminent. The point is, when you see these things, you're already in the tribulation. So when the false pre-tribulation rapture teachers keep saying that Jesus can come any minute and that you need to be rapture ready and look up where your redemption draws near, please go look up the part of that verse that they leave out, the part where Jesus said, when you see these things happening, these events of the tribulation, then look up, for then and only then does your redemption draw near. For just as Jesus himself taught, the gathering of his people doesn't take place until immediately after the tribulation of those days, when every eye shall see him coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. 
This is no secret event. In fact, it will be the most public event in history. Every eye will see him when he descends from heaven to gather his people and establish his kingdom on this earth. So make no mistake, there is nowhere in scripture where it says that Christ descends, gathers his people, and then makes a U-turn back to heaven. The Bible teaches that there is but one second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is always described as a highly visible and glorious global event. The Bible teaches that as Christ descends to earth to establish his kingdom, his people will be gathered together to meet him in the air, and that they will then rule and reign with him in his kingdom on this earth. No pre-tribulation rapture, no secret coming of the Lord, and no U-turn back to heaven is ever spoken of in the scriptures. So if you're holding on to the false hope of a pre-tribulation rapture, you've made the devil's day because he's set you up for a shipwreck of your faith when the tribulation comes and Jesus doesn't. Those who believe Satan's doctrine of demons are in for a faith-shattering experience when they find themselves in the midst of the tribulation. When speaking privately to his disciples about the end of the age and his second coming, Jesus warned, Take heed that no one deceives you. When speaking to the Thessalonian believers about the second coming of the Lord and our gathering together to him, the Apostle Paul also warned, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Paul says to this church, Let no one deceive you. You will see the Antichrist first. Jesus also said, that you will see the events of the tribulation that he has described, including the Antichrist's abomination of desolation, first. Then, when you see these things, it's time to look up, for only then is his return imminent. So Jesus and his apostles taught that the church will see all these things of the tribulation, and the apostle Peter said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that, when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy." Think it not strange, Peter says, but rather rejoice when you partake of Christ's sufferings. I encourage you to spend some time thinking about what Peter is saying here and what it really means to partake of Christ's sufferings. And then think about what Jesus meant when he said, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Can you see where the pre-tribulation rapture teachings are contrary to biblical teachings? A pre-tribulation rapture is all about saving yourself, not denying yourself, and it's certainly not about taking up your cross to follow Jesus and losing your life for his sake 
as Christian martyrs have done in the past and will do again during the coming tribulation, God's people aren't supposed to think it's strange to partake of Christ's sufferings, to suffer fiery trials and tribulation, persecution and martyrdom. Jesus said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. He said, You're blessed when they persecute you, not cursed as the pre-trib rapture teaching would have you believe. And Jesus also said, Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Since the way that leads to life is difficult, why is it that the pre-trib rapture teachers are teaching that there's an easy way, a rapture to whisk the church away to heaven before all the trouble begins? The teaching of a pre-tribulation rapture is simply false from every biblical angle. John the Baptist was beheaded. Jesus himself was crucified. Nearly all the apostles were martyred. And millions of Christians have been slain for their faith since then. Yet, pre-trib teachers want you to believe what? that the last generation of the church is somehow excused from the persecution and martyrdom that has characterized the church from its beginning? That this last generation just gets a free pass and a ticket to heaven? It's time for a reality check. Christians are called to take up their cross and be partakers of Christ's sufferings. Christians are called to endure tribulation and suffering when it comes. And Jesus, as always, is our example. So let's look at what the Bible has to say about Jesus when he took up his cross. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So considering that Jesus endured the cross, and considering that all but one of his apostles became martyrs for the Lord, and considering that millions of Christians were killed for their faith during the many centuries of the Roman Catholic Inquisition, and considering that the true Church of Christ from its very beginning suffered tribulation that included persecution and martyrdom, why should you think it's strange that tribulation will continue to be the experience of the church until Jesus returns at the end of the age? Why do you look for an easy way out, a pre-tribulation rapture, when Jesus himself said that the way that leads to life is difficult? There was no easy way out for Jesus, or for his apostles, or for the millions of his faithful followers who have died as martyrs right up to the present time. Yet they did not think it strange to be partakers of the sufferings of Christ. They didn't insist, as the pre-trib teachers do, that a loving God would never allow his people to suffer tribulation or die as martyrs. And they didn't accuse Jesus of, quote, beating up his bride, unquote, with tribulation, as pre-tribbers have been heard to say today. Nor did they ever confuse Christian tribulation involving persecution and death with the wrath of God against the wicked. 
Instead, they denied themselves, took up their cross, and followed Jesus, and they became partakers of his sufferings. And just as it is written that he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him, so too did they endure the tortured death of martyrs for the joy that was set before them, the joy of being with the Lord and spending eternity in his kingdom. And the same will be true of believers during the tribulation. They too will endure all persecution, torture, and martyrdom for the joy that is set before them in Christ. And theirs will be the victory. For, for although the devil and his Antichrist will make war with the saints and overcome them, this speaks only of killing the physical body. And Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. It's our souls that Jesus is concerned about. Our bodies of flesh are only temporary vessels anyway. Our physical bodies will perish one way or another. And Jesus told us not to fear those who would kill us. It's our soul that's important to him. And this is why, even though the devil and his Antichrist are allowed to overcome and kill the physical bodies of believers during the tribulation, it's the martyrs who will have the eternal victory. And this is why Revelation 12 verse 11 says that believers actually overcome the devil. He doesn't win. The gates of hell don't prevail against the true church of Jesus Christ because Revelation 12.11 tells us that they, the believers, overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. This is speaking of overcoming the devil through martyrdom, for these believers love Jesus more than their own lives, and so they're willing to die rather than to bow down to Satan's Antichrist. It's through martyrdom that many believers in those days will overcome the devil who wanted their souls for all eternity. That's why the devil's Antichrist will threaten believers with death, because he wants to intimidate them with the fear of death so that they'll renounce Christ and that the devil will have what he's really after, their souls. So when the devil offers his temptation to spare their physical lives if they will bow down to his Antichrist, the believers will overcome him by choosing to die instead for their love of Jesus. And in that day, they will surely be more than conquerors. So as Peter said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Think it not strange that the church that began in tribulation with persecution and martyrdom will also end in tribulation, persecution, and martyrdom. Think it not strange that you should become a partaker of Christ's sufferings. For Jesus had not only told you to take up your cross and follow him, but he also said, He who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. If you're a Christian, you are called by Christ to take up that cross and partake of his sufferings and you are appointed to tribulation in this world. Again, the Bible clearly shows that the children of God will suffer tribulation, and Jesus simply warned us that this same tribulation will intensify so that in the last days there will be great tribulation. And he said, See, I have told you beforehand, there will be great tribulation. And this is because the last generation of believers will see Satan's Antichrist rise to power. And we're told in Revelation 12, verse 12, 
that Satan will be filled with great wrath because he knows that he only has a short time. During the tribulation, the children of God will suffer under Satan's wrath, which will be unleashed through his Antichrist. The Bible makes this so very clear. The tribulation isn't God's wrath, it's Satan's wrath. And when God does pour out his wrath, he's already proven that he's perfectly able to keep his people safe on this earth, just as he did for Noah and Lot, and just as he did for the children of Israel when he poured out the plagues against Egypt. So whereas the pre-trib teachers tell you to think it strange that the church will be here on the earth during the Great Tribulation, that's the opposite of what the Bible tells us. And whereas the pre-trib teachers tell you to be rapture ready, Jesus told you to be tribulation ready. That's why he told us about it beforehand. So think it not strange, children of God, because tribulation is for the church and God's wrath is for the wicked. Think it not strange, and may the Lord quicken his truth to your heart and prepare you for what is to come upon this earth. In closing, I just want to share a word that came in a newsletter from David Wilkerson's ministry while I was working on this video. His son Gary had written this message, and it was about the many sufferings that Christians must endure. And it so perfectly confirmed what I've been saying here about enduring tribulation that I felt I should share this single sentence that was set in bold print on the cover of this newsletter. Gary Wilkerson wrote, You can endure a lot of suffering when your heart is set on a purpose, but if your heart is set on comfort, you can't endure any suffering at all. End of quote. This statement is so true, and Satan knows it, and that's exactly why he wants your heart set on the comforting thought of a pre-tribulation rapture. He wants you thinking that you'll have all the comforts of being in heaven during the great tribulation on earth, because he knows that if your heart is set on comfort, you won't be able to endure any suffering at all never mind the worst suffering in all the history of this world. The devil knows that if you've got your heart set on the comforts of heaven, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be able to endure the coming tribulation. He wants you to be among those who fall away and depart from the faith in the last days, just as the scriptures foretell. He doesn't want you to be tribulation ready because he wants your soul. So instead of setting your heart on the devil's comforting but false hope of spending the years of the tribulation in heaven, I encourage you to believe the biblical truth and set your heart on Jesus and on enduring the tribulation for the eternal joy that is set before you, just as Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. And I understand that there are many Christians who can't see how they'd ever be able to endure the tremendous sufferings of the Great Tribulation. But please remember Jesus' promise. He said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And when the Great Tribulation comes, he who has promised will be faithful. He will be with you through it all. Yes, some will become martyrs for the faith, and some will still be alive and remain as survivors to be caught up to meet the Lord when he returns after the tribulation. But either way, the Lord is with his people to the end. No one will be able to endure in his own strength, but as the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this is the victory 
that has overcome the world, our faith. So have faith that the Lord will give you all the strength to endure when you need it. And may the Lord bless you and keep you always. Thank you.